Hey, how you doing? It's James here with another video for you and in this one we're going to be talking about false dichotomy. False dichotomy and how you can use this to absolutely explode your sales. We're not just talking about little 25% leaps in results or little 10, 50% leaps in results. This strategic approach has multiplied sales by over 900%. That is real numbers. Yep, nine times the typical result. And this is me using this exact strategic approach in one of the highest risk direct response marketing environments with a billion dollar brand. In this case, it was actually with Hewlett Packard. I was hired to work with them and the result just by using, amongst others, but pr primarily using this strategic approach, we got a 900% plus result in sales. Absolutely incredible. You can use it too whether you're an information marketer, whether you sell your expertise, or whether you sell hard goods. Regardless, this works. So let's dig into it. With, um, with the false dichotomy, what we are doing is we look to engineer the perception of only two choices, when in fact there are actually many. All right? um, and, and really, this pattern is as old as the hills. Uh, the old good versus evil, uh, Windows versus Mac, <laughs> uh, Coke versus Pepsi. Um, what we need to do with false dichotomy is manufacture a similar either or mechanism in our prospects. Okay, so even though choices are almost unlimited, we want to engineer the perception of there only really being two choices. Okay, uh, and what this really does is create a decision-making shortcut. So we're helping our customers make a decision. And used ethically, obviously it's a very it's a very cool thing to use because how many of us have been paralyzed and not made the decision that has been right for us because there's just been too much choice? How many times have you hesitated on a purchase decision because the choices were too overwhelming? Okay? False dichotomy used correctly creates this shortcut in decision making where we engineer the perception of only two real choices. Okay? What it also does, when done properly, is engender a greater sense of belonging, significance, and validation in our prospects. Okay, So when we engineer the perception of only two choices, and someone makes that choice, it absolutely reinforces a sense of belonging, significance, and validation. And we see this all the time in like football teams. Think about football teams and how... You know, even in a, in a football match, it's always one side versus the other, okay? Now, of course, there are other choices. You can go away and support somebody else who's not even playing that day, can't you? Okay? But the very sense that we create these rules and this set of circumstances that means on this day, you've got to choose what either or, okay? And you see this. Let me just clarify this point. You see this especially if you're not into sports. Have you ever not been into, I don't know, let's just say tennis, right? But you turn on the tennis match, and within, and, and you know, you're not a particular fan or something like or anything like that. But within a short period of time, you find yourself really getting behind one of the players. Okay, it might be you know the person who's winning because you like their attitude or whatever it is you like about them, or it may be that you get behind the uh, the person who's losing. Yeah, we all support the loser uh, in so many cases. Okay, in those instances where you don't have an, a pre-existing uh, commitment to either or players, it's a kind of engineered dichotomy there, okay? So, a bit of a, uh, went off on a tangent there, but hopefully you get the idea, okay? So when we create the perception of only two choices, okay, we engender a greater sense of belonging, significance, and validation, okay? And what you can do is, you can attach the polarity, so whichever side you're taking, your side, so what you're selling has to represent a particular side, if you like, or, or, or uh, polar, or pole, if you like, of the dichotomy. Um, so you represent one pole of the dichotomy. You can attach that pole, or polarity, to a behavior, to values, to identity, to an attitude. Okay. So like, let's take, for example, Mac. They did this just because it's a popular example. Mac did this with some very contentious advertising they did, where they actually had two characters, if you remember, and they actually had people there to represent. There was the Windows guy, 
and the Mac guy, and the Mac guy was this cool guy in his slacks, and he had his trainers on and his his uh, sweatshirt on, and he was a cool looking guy. And then in the ads, they had this other guy who represented everything that Windows was, according to Mac, who was this very nerdy looking guy in a kind of a flasher's jacket, you know, looking very dodgy and disorganized and a bit geeky, like really severely geeky, like a proper nerd. And it was like engineered dichotomy, okay? There are more choices than just Windows or Mac, all right? But they engineer the perception that there's only one or the other, and they attached that pole of the dichotomy to, in this case, it was kind of like an identity and an attitude, wasn't it? If you remember the adverts. If you don't see whether you can check them out, it's very, very interesting. Okay, so you can attach the pole to usually any of the things that I've outlined there, behavior, values, identity, attitude. There are other things you can attach it to. Those are the main sort of big four. Uh, when I was using it with Hewlett Packard, it was they were selling a touch smart PC. Very cool, very high end. You touch the screen. You know, it's like fifteen hundred pounds here in the UK, so like two thousand dollar computer. Not a cheap computer. And we actually at the very beginning set up the dico the, the, the dichotomy and attached it to behavior. Okay? So we basically um, well, I won't go into exactly what we said here, but we attached uh, the other pole, our kind of enemy pole, if you like, to a different kind of computer using behavior. Do you follow? Right? So we basically, we pointed straight away to the behavior. We said, look, if you do this kind of thing on your computer, then this is not for you. We weren't that overt, but basically this is what we suggested through implied inference, which I've already gone over. And what that did was that engendered a great sense of belonging to the uh, people who stayed with us who wanted to buy this computer. And here's the thing, when you use it at the beginning of your message, you actually also, also utilize hyper-exclusion too. So because we did that in that in this particular instance with Hewlett Packard, um, and we, we, we used hyper-exclusion too. So everybody who represented that kind of behavior, okay, of the dichotomy, they went. Because they knew not only were they not this not for them, but that was their behavior, so they had better go. So we, we utilized hyper exclusion too, plus we engineered a false dichotomy where we, we intimated that, or we kind of hinted at the idea that there were only really two kinds of computer users, okay? And you were either one of them or you were one of us, <laughs> to quote, to kind of quote a Frank Kern type of thing. Frank Kern often talks about this when he talks about the us versus them. It's a very, very similar process okay but you can attach this us versus them thing to different kinds of things it's not just a whole set of people you can you can attach it to behaviors attitudes identity values beliefs lots of different things okay so hopefully you can already think of ways that you can utilize this manufacturing a false dichotomy you know um, you see it everywhere by the way I mean I've named a few here but like even you know to take a, a little niche business where I built mine you know if you take NLP that started off with a false dichotomy. You're either on the Richard Bandler side or you're on the John Grinder side, okay? And done properly, you eliminate other choices, okay? Now, obviously, the market is completely fragmented now, but um, that's another example of a kind of an engineered dichotomy, okay? And you find that a lot with people who have created a field, is they often go off in completely opposite directions. I'm not suggesting that that's always engineered, but it is kind of funny how oftentimes the opposite directions they go off to, they start to stand for almost polar values, beliefs, attitudes, identity. And so they manufacture sometimes just by, by the very n virtue of their actions, they manufacture this kind of false dichotomy. Okay? So think about how you could use that in what you're doing um, and also how you can use it to engender a greater sense of belonging, validation and significance in those who choose you. Okay, at the end of the day, uh, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.